The triumphant reemergence of Pokemon in 2016 hardly went unnoticed, especially by anyone living near cellular towers. The second coming of the worldwide sensation, catalyzed by the gaming app Pokemon Go, led to manifestations on countless electronic resources and media, including but not limited to exquisite fan art, in-depth gaming guides, clever memes, and viral videos displaying mass mobs of humanoids roaming the streets in search of rare Pokemon. Among that digital onslaught were videos claiming to identify the real-life animals that were the basis for certain Pokemon. When I saw a Magikarp, a fish-type Pokemon, being compared to a yellow-white rockfish, I was inclined to offer a more proper comparison utilizing my background in evolutionary biology and ichthyology. To begin this hypothetical analysis, a simple examination of the Pokemon named Magikarp reveals the apparent root, carp. AOI rockfish is most assuredly not a type of carp. In fact, those fishes are in separate orders. The Japanese name for Magikarp is Koikingu, or Koiking. And koi are simply domesticated carp that have been bred generation after generation via artificial selection to produce an ornamental subspecies affectionately known as living jewels and swimming flowers. Guessing that a goldfish is the inspiration for Magikarp is not too far off, as modern goldfish were bred from Prussian carp, and Magikarp's orangey coloration and rounded, stubbier body resembles a common goldfish. However, there is one distinct feature that distinguishes koi from goldfish, barbels, or whisker-like sensory organs fixated on the lips of koi, not a part of a goldfish's morphology. The presence of barbels on Magikarp excludes goldfish as a possible template species. When I was a young lad, enjoying the characteristic colored cartridges that locked deftly into my Game Boy, Magikarp was a staple figure, a pixelated ambassador that connected Japanese culture to the rest of the world. Thanks to Magikarp, I learned about the existence of koi, or nishikogi, literally brocaded carp, and how ingrained those decorative fish, among other fishes, were in Asiatic societies. For centuries within Eastern Asian cultures, carp have been emblematic of auspicious traits. Strength, health, luck, wealth, tenacity, and destiny. Often when we imagine a Japanese pond, our thoughts synthesize into soothing glimpses of the aesthetically pleasing fish, painted in intricate patterns of red, orange, black, yellow, white, and cream, gracefully swimming beneath an oriental garden tucked aside an ancient temple. No matter if your Pokemon experience is limited, you probably know that Magikarp, this rather weak and ubiquitous Pokemon is not that popular. This is understandably so, seeing that its splash ability is a sad excuse for an attack. For the average player, it's inevitable to encounter one or two or fifty Magikarp while perusing the virtual realm for more desirable Pokemon. Often the little fellow is described as the world's weakest Pokemon, and the worst Pokemon ever. Nevertheless, the docile, fictional Magikarp does have roots in reality. And believe you me, the real-world fish has a deep, rich history and deserves our respect. Carp, or Cyprinids, make up the largest family among all fishes, and even the largest out of all vertebrates, with over 3,000 extant species. Many carp are hardy freshwater fishes, capable of adapting to withstand brackish and saline water, low-oxygen environments, and traveling vast distances in baskets and wet moss. These are reasons why carp were among the first species to have been domesticated by humans as a food source. The fictional Magikarp is also quite hardy, capable of living in extremely polluted ponds and waters both marine and fresh. The Romans, over 2,000 years ago, cultivated carp from the Danube River by way of Piscinae, expensive stone-built ponds, and in China, aquaculture of carp was present at least in the year 475 BCE. From ancient times, fast forward almost two millennia to the early 1800s, where in the Niigata prefecture of Japan, in a mountainous locale between the cities of Nagaoka and Ojiwa, there the isolated inhabitants, who were resourceful, artistic, and competitive, began breeding their magoi, or food carp, to create new varieties. Just the same way humans have selectively created a multitude of dog breeds. Winters in this mountain village could have 6 meters, or 20 feet of snow accumulation, at times getting so cold that the farmers slash breeders would bring colored carps into their homes, placing them into special built indoor ponds. In a handful of decades, the popularity of keeping and breeding koi spread across Japan, producing more varieties of distinct patterns and colorations. Not only was there monetary value in raising Nishikigoi, but there was also the aforementioned auspicious and superstitious qualities that carp provide as well as the invaluable companionship a pet can provide, which is nothing new, as even in millennia past, certain Romans of the higher classes adorned their beloved pet carp in expensive jewelry. After the turn of the century, around 1904, domesticated mirror carp were imported from Germany, 
create an even more variety. But it was only after World War II that intensive breeding and dissemination of colored carps truly began. The pursuit expanded as the standard of living increased and aquaculture methods improved. In Japan, with land being so limited and valuable, in tandem with the precepts of Buddhism, quaint garden ponds stocked with koi became a rational product of the culture. Nowadays, there are over a hundred named varieties of koi, recognized by an eccentric and dedicated subculture of breeders and competitors seeking to produce grand champions. A subculture with a similar enthusiasm and incentive embodied by Pokemon fanatics. Prized specimens of koi can be sold at auction for around $15,000, and in some cases over $1 million. So is there a specific species of fish that can be attributed to the infamous Magikarp? Yes and no. Although the common carp, Cyprinus carpio, has long been presumed to be the species once bred in Japan into the now domesticated varieties of koi that we see today, new molecular evidence suggests that a separate species, a type of East Asian carp, likely Cyprinus rubrofuscus, is the true parent species of the domesticated subspecies within Japan. Still more research is needed to confirm and trace the lineages and produce proper systematics of koi in Japan and across the globe. Unsurprisingly, due to the introduction of mirror and other species from Western cultures over the centuries, classifying the multi-generational hybridizations of today's introgressed koi is rather complicated. Japan truly has a spectacularly diverse and colorful melting pot of domesticated fishes. Lastly, to further my argument that Magikarp is a parallel of Japanese and Shikigoi, I offer the evidence of Gyarados, the impressive dragon-like Pokemon resulting from Magikarp's evolution, an evolution that perfectly mirrors an ancient Chinese myth pulsing through time from the late Han Dynasty. The myth describes a carp attempting to ascend the treacherous rapids of the Yellow River, and should the fish succeed in its aquatic trek by implementing innate qualities of strength and perseverance, the tiny creature morphs into a fabulous dragon. Centuries past, that same myth crossed the Sea of Japan, saturating Japanese culture, as evidenced by this Japanese saying, Koi no Taki no Bori, which translates as, Koi climbing the rapids. From a scientific viewpoint, it is known that individuals cannot evolve, only populations evolve, and in the real world, such exotic instances of metamorphosis do not exist. But from a fantastical viewpoint, it is intriguing to ponder upon a determined fish magically morphing into a powerful dragon, be it within a virtual realm or a mythological one. The inherent dichotomy between transformations in reality versus transformations in fiction is intriguing, but what is even more provocative is our dependence on myth and fiction, on our generational stories, no matter if they are told around a campfire, a dinner table, or from a handheld gaming console. Are Koi and Magikarp heroic symbols in disguise? Indeed, Karp and Ishikigoi are inspirational figures, yearning for something greater, offering glimmers of multicolored hope. Even if Magikarp is despised for being pathetically weak, that little Pokemon reminds us in our deepest of thoughts that it takes only a bit of willpower, time, and perseverance to transform an individual into something marvelous.